Praise the Lord. If you breathe, that means you owe God a praise. If you can take a breath in and let it out, you owe God a praise. Is he worthy of your praise in that room? Has God been good to us all today? Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amongst the presence of the saints of God. We thank God. We honor the Lord for this honored anniversary service. And we're going to move right along the service. We are going to have our scripture reading coming from Sister Sharon Lewis. I was going to get Minister Anderson to come and lead us in prayer. Robinson, sorry, I thought I saw. Following uh, Sister Sharon, I'm going to ask our Minister Aaron, Aaron Robinson to come and lead us in prayer. Preserve me, O God. If we all can read it together. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extended not to thee. But to the saints thou art in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. That drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We thank Amen. God for the reading of his word, Amen. and is already blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Eternal Heavenly Father, in your name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the scripture, Lord, we thank you for the souls that's here today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for bringing us this far, Lord. We thank ask, Lord, Lord God, that you will carry us all the way, Lord God. Lord God, bless this service, Lord God. Lord God, someone came, Lord God, for a touch. Someone came to be delivered. You know the situations. Meet the needs of your people. We ask your blessings upon this service, Lord God. We're not here for granted, Lord God. We don't take you for granted, God, but we look to you for help. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that you would bless, Lord God, bless the pastor of this church. Lord God, strengthen him, Lord God. Continue to be with him, Lord God, as he yields to you, Father. We ask your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you. We honor the Lord for being in the house tonight. We thank God for his goodness and for his mercy. We ask him to praise him to join us. I, mean, I guess it's considered praise and worship. It used to be called devotion. Anybody remember that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Devotion and service, but now they changed it to praise and worship. So I guess we're the praise and worship leaders. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But the only thing we're going to do is give you a little bit of opportunity to join in with the praise, okay? No one came to be entertained. We didn't sell tickets at the door. Is that all right? If you did, you get your money back, but we didn't sell any tickets. 
So you came here to get something. This is audience participation. No one came to be entertained. So we just want to welcome the Lord. And, and we want to welcome you to the City Refuge. If this is your first time here or your 50th time here, please get up, shake someone's hand, let them know that you're glad to be here and glad to see them now, as we welcome you into the City of Refuge. Yeah. Lift our hands and give them praise. We come to 
exhortation, a, a praise. We want to give you a chance to, to stand on your feet and say something about the goodness of the Lord. Sing a song, read a scripture, whatever it might be, because we didn't come to entertain you. So there is audience participation. Is that all right? Amen. All right. All sales are final. We didn't sell tickets, but there's no refunds. But it's our prayer that you do leave here with something. So we're asking for someone to say something good about the glory of God. Oh, bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I just came to lift up my hands. You don't know like I know. But the 
Come on, if you're really determined to go with Jesus. I'm determined to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. In trials, tribulation, persecution, I'll be faithful. I'm determined to go all the way with the Lord. I'm going to run because I know where the end's going to be. But I live right, heaven belongs to me. If you live right, heaven belongs to you. Hallelujah. If I hold up, God is going to give me a crown. Let's give a praise him a round of applause. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Just thank God. Amen. For you being here. Amen. This beautiful day. Amen. That the Lord has made. Amen. The Lord. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Now, this is to the day to the hour. City of Refuge held his first service. Amen. June 28, 2009. 5 p.m. Hampton in Mechanicsville. And God has been faithful. God has been good. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. 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 Six years has gone by so fast. Thank you, Jesus. Where has the time gone? Amen. I just want to thank God. Uh, this is our first reunion service. Amen. This year with the anniversary falling on a Sunday, the Lord laid on our heart to invite all of our friends and members and family, those who have worshiped with us, just to come and just to say praise the Lord to one another. Amen. Amen. And we just thank God that you have responded so beautifully. Amen. To come and help us celebrate the blessings of the Lord. I don't want to get into a lot of acknowledgments and name the names, but I do want to acknowledge how many of you were here at the very first service. I want you to stand up. June 28, 2009. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. One, one was in the arm and one was in the womb. Amen. But both of them were here. Both of my kids were here. Amen. How many of you worship with us at the Hampton Inn? At any point in time? Stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Hampton Inn Mechanicsville. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, thank God, thank God, amen, for those services there, those who came on board and joined the ministry there, thank God for, it would only be fitting, thank God, try this here, amen, amen, be with us today, amen, I remember that first uh, back to school rally, um, at that time it was just me and my wife, and we said we're going to get our school supplies, amen, to the whole community, amen, and I think somehow on Facebook or whatever, word got out to try it. Thank you, Jesus. And it was packed out. Amen. Amen. But the Lord met us in that little old room. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And my prayer has been then and is now. God, if you show up, everything else will fall into place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May not have the biggest band, may not have the biggest choir praising, but if God shows up, thank you, Jesus. When God is in the building, thank you, Jesus. How many of you ever felt the presence of God in City Refuge? Ah, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. And so we just thank God, amen, amen, for him just doing great and marvelous things. I want to acknowledge our out-of-town guests. I, I can't, I said I won't acknowledge everybody. Uh, brother, brother Ramon, Sister Shakira, come all the way from Newport News. Amen. Amen, amen. I'm always one of our first musicians. Amen, amen. He can play for anybody, make enough. He didn't have to work nowhere else, but he said, but I believe in you, and I'm going to help you. And Lord bless, we would ride that little white van. Thank you, Jesus, every Sunday. Thank you, Jesus, from Hampton to, uh, 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 to Richmond. Thank you, Jesus. And I just thank God. I just thank God. Thank God for your brother. Thank God for your wife. And when, uh, I think one was in the oven, and one was in the arms, you got two young men growing up in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I just thank God. Amen. 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 All the families that are here, I'm just so grateful. I don't want to get into a lot of names, but I just thank God for those our first members and those who joined. Thank you, Jesus, when we were at the hotel. I, I think I acknowledge, amen, that Sister Angie joined at the hotel. The Masons, Mother Coleman Jefferson joined at the hotel. Amen, amen, amen. Not too many people 
We joined the church at the hotel, but God blessed us. Didn't come since the change started hanging out with us at the hotel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know if they do some others. Amen. But I just thank God. I thank God. I just thank God for how far he has brought us and, and how he has blessed us. Amen. And just to see everybody almost in one room at one time. Amen. Amen. There were those who worshiped at the hotel. And there was Decatur Street. Let me see the Decatur Street people. Let me see your hand, Decatur Street. All right. Y'all remember Decatur Street. Amen. How many of us at George Wilf High School? Yeah, y'all remember George Wilf High School. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. How many remember the upper room? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And thanks be to God. Now we're here. Amen. At 5710 Orchid Lane here in the beautiful city of Richmond. This is the first place that we have to ourselves. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To God be the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We ain't sharing with nobody. Amen. We have church wherever we want. Amen. Accommodate those that are here. So we just thank God. Thank God. Amen. And those they we just acknowledge those who are part of our first service. Thank God for Bishop Miller, Lady Miller and his daughter for with us at our first service. Amen. Six years ago. Amen. At this time, thank God the man of God has arrived. Amen. Amen. Those of you know that he's a powerful man of God. This time we want to just worship God in giving. Amen. And we want to worship God in giving. Amen. Amen. We're not asking for a certain amount. Amen. But if this church has been a blessing to you, amen. We want you to be a blessing to this ministry as we continue to endeavor to do, amen, a work for the Lord. Amen. Whatever you have to give, amen, we'll greatly appreciate it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're making out a check. We're making out the city of refuge. If you don't have uh, money on you, you can go to our website. You can use PayPal. You can make an online donation. Amen. But whatever you have to give, the six dollars, ten dollars, sixty dollars, hundred dollars, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart to give. Amen. John, you go right on in the office. Thank you, Jesus. Be a blessing to the house of the Lord today. Whatever you have to give, large or small. Amen. It's all appreciated. We ask you to please stand with that gift, that offering that you have. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O God, for these, your people that have gathered. God, I thank you for every one of them, God. I thank you for their prayers. I thank you, O God, for their contributions. I thank you, O God, for their labor and love and service to the house of God. We ask you, God, to bless this celebration, bless this reunion. But most of all, let it be a revival, O God. Send forth a rainbow word. Hallelujah, to be a blessing to your people this day in this place. For us in Jesus' name, we pray and all of God's people say amen. 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 You've been directed by the, from the back by the usher. The musicians would give us some music. Amen. As we worship God and give him.
everybody take your position. And anybody want to sing with Italy in district meet. So if anybody from Tribe, Gates of Rage want to help City Refuge, any of our former members, if you've never sung with a choir before, you want to give it a try today, come on. Thank you, Jesus. City of Refuge, and it's been a blessing to this ministry from day one. Um, even before we started the church, uh, Elder Easley knew that God had placed in our hearts to start a work here in Richmond. It has been a, a, a confidant, a source of encouragement, inspiration, instruction, and strength as we have labored here in this part of the vineyard. He serves as the National Evangelist for the Way of the Cross Church and the advisor of the National Youth for Christ. After this selection, or these selections, the next speaking voice will be that of District Elder Melvin Easel. Let's receive him as he comes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your hands together. Amen, Melvin Easel. Come on, put your hands together for the choir. Put your hands together. Amen. This for God being God. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Amen. Say amen. Can we say praise the Lord to everybody? Oh, that sounds mighty good. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Pastor Travis is going over memory lane and looking at all that God has done for us. And I wouldn't believe it at the time, but when we look at what God has brought us from, he mentioned from the Holiday Inn with one little amp and one microphone to all that God has done. Now, this might be a big cathedral to you, but I love my church. Amen. And I thank God for what God has done for us. Amen. So if you don't mind, this portion, I, I think we can, we can say that this is a portion of the choir. <laughs> It may just be missing one or two, but it's still a portion of the choir. We're going to sing, look where God has brought us from. Y'all pray for
the Lord again to everybody. Amen. Six years. God has been faithful. Hallelujah. God has blessed us. Amen. And seen. Amen. That uh, the Lord has just kept this ministry and God has provided room for it. And I think that before we go any further, amen, we ought to give God praise for the great things that he has done. Amen. Pastor Miller is in our midst today, amen, and I'm going to ask him to come and say praise the Lord, amen, in his own way. I know Pastor's going to call, amen, but 
I'm not used to seeing him out there. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask him to come over here and sit where I was sitting. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on and say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Are there any praises in this house? Hallelujah. Are there any praises in this house that know he's worthy of all the glory and all the praise? Hallelujah. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the angel of this house, Elder Travell Travis, District Elder Travell Travis, and to all of the missionaries, all the deacons, all the saints, all the friends. It's good to be in this house and to the speaker of the hour, to District Elder Melvin Easley. Give God a praise Thank for them you. today. Amen. You know, I, I, I remember, you know, everybody knows Elder Travis was with us for a few years, and I remember at one particular service where um, he was with us, and uh, we, um, the Lord blessed that day that I don't know how many souls would be baptized, but he left the building and said, we got to find a bigger place. And I believe it was prophetic because I believe that was the spirit that God had put in him to push him to find that place that God had for him. I, I, I thank God for these six years and the fact that you are still in existence, you ought to give God thanks for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because there are many ministries that started at the same time he did and are no longer uh, 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 and, and open to the public now. Have closed their doors, have been shut down. Right. But it is by the grace, it is by the mercy of God, God. Hallelujah, that we are still here and that we are not consumed. Amen. But we, we give God the glory because he is a great man of God. He has worked with me for many years. Um, and I, I always saw that drive in him. Amen. And, I, and I, I look at him now. I know, I don't even know, man, but 37. And he still has that drive, amen, like he did 10 years ago, amen. And that's a blessing, amen, amen. God so called the young men because they what? They're strong, amen. And I believe God is using him. He is an anointed man of God. And God has a, 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 such a, a great future and a great destiny for this ministry. I'm getting ready to take my seat. But I want to say something to this congregation. We know that six represents man. All right? And God is saying all these years, you remember at the tomb of Lazarus, when, when the Lord went to call Lazarus from the tomb, Lazarus comes forth and he's hopping out of the tomb, bound. My God, my and the Lord told the people to loose the man and let him go. My, my challenge to this ministry now, this is your year. God said, I have brought you to this point. Now what are you going to do here? How, where are you going? I wish somebody would get up and where are you going from here? God said, I have done all. I have provided you with everything. My anointing is here. My spirit is here. Yeah. Now what are you going to do? Amen. To share and to do what God has called us to do. I am I am very excited. Amen. When Pastor uh, Travell came to Richmond. Amen. Because for a while I thought I was going to have to come to Richmond. Because nobody else would come. Amen. And I'm so glad. Amen. That he released me from that particular burden. Amen. And he's been doing good. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why I know burden has left. Amen. The, the assignment has been fulfilled. And that's why this ministry uh, means particularly uh, that to me because, amen, I saw uh, some time ago before, I don't know when Pastor uh, Chabel had got the call, amen, but I saw some time ago that the Lord wanted a church, a uh, place of refuge in the city of Richmond. And God has been uh, that faithful and I'm not just saying this. These things have been said a long time ago. You, Amen. Sister Deborah and Brother James can attest to that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So we talked about this some time ago. We talked about relocating. Uh, but the Lord just would not release me to do. And then when I found out that a capable man of God was coming, 
uh, down here, amen. And the Lord had uprooted him and brought him to the city of Richmond, amen. I am eternally grateful to see, amen, fruition, amen, the word being made flesh, amen. the word being revealed unto us and seeing uh, the people that God has relocated and brought down here, amen, to be such a, a blessing uh, to the ministry. Now, uh, that young lady that y'all saw me run out of the pulpit because y'all normally don't see me do that, I uh, stand up, hun, hallelujah, that's my aunt, Thank hallelujah. You. Amen. That's my father's sister. Amen. Amen. Who lives in the community uh, not too far from this particular ministry. Amen. 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 So, amen. I praise God that she came on over here to be with us. Amen. We're praising God. Amen. For what God is doing in and through you. Amen. 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 Let's open our Bibles to Luke the 10th chapter. Amen. Luke the 10th chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I got excited when I called home and I found out that my uncle, uh, James Kennedy, didn't go home today. And so I said, well, if he didn't go home, he's probably going to be with us tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I said, did Uncle James come to church today? Said, no, he didn't come. I said, well, it's a good, good, good chance that he's going to be with us tonight. So I'm glad he didn't go home. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so good to see all of you now. If I don't get a chance to preach, uh, Pastor Miller, the gates of praise took it all out of me this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed in such a tremendous way. Uh, in such a tremendous way. Amen. I'm still somewhere hanging around the clouds. Hallelujah. Amen. I couldn't even go and change clothes. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord fell in the place in such a unique, in such an awesome way. Amen. But I believe that God is not finished yet. I do believe that God has more for us. Amen. To receive from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now if you would open your Bibles to Luke the 10th chapter beginning at the, uh, we're going to work up to it, but uh, beginning at the 25th verse. Amen. Down through the God's been good to you, singing down through the years. God's been good to me, singing down through the years. Oh, God's been good to me. He's been good, really been good to me. Oh, singing all of my life. says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, It is written, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Somebody shout, neighbor. neighbor. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus answered and said, Certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. By the chance there came a certain priest that way and went, and he saw him, and he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was in that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, somebody shout Samaritan, as he journeyed came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him into the inn, and took care of him. And on the morning, or on the morrow, when he departed, 
who took out two pence and gave it to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendeth more when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinketh thou was neighbor unto that that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. And he said, Jesus, and then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything that has been done and everything that's been said. We thank you for six wonderful years that you have blessed this ministry, this pastor and his companion. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, Lord Jesus, because even in the adversities and even in the attacks that have come, God, Lord Jesus, to send distractions, they stay. Hallelujah, focus on the mission and the call that you called them to. Father God, we thank you, God, for the blessing today that we're even able to celebrate. We thank you, God, because God, hallelujah, that his companion is still with him. Even though, God, the enemy, hallelujah, attacked her body. God, hallelujah, you proved yourself over and over again. Father God, hallelujah, we don't need a reason to praise you, God. Hallelujah, we already got a reason to praise you. But we see, God, hallelujah, your faithfulness, and we see your blessings. Father God, we must, hallelujah, declare that you have been good to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I want to use amen for a subject, a subject amen, here. He said, now, he said, and he said unto them, thou hast answered right. Do this, and thou shalt live. I want to use for a subject matter on today, I want to live. Look at somebody and shout, I want to live. live. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them, I want to live. live. And then as a subtopic today, amen, I want to challenge this ministry, amen, to share with you that God says there's work to be done. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I've got work to do. Work to amen. Do. Amen. In the presence of the Lord, give me a few moments, and amen, amen, and we'll be able to share with you what the Lord has shared with us. Psalms, amen, 127, and one says, except the Lord build the house, yes. they that labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city. Oh, yeah. He said, the watchman then waketh in vain. He lets us know that as leaders or as individuals who have a desire to do the work of the Lord, amen, that we must totally depend upon God. Right. And if we are not totally dependent upon God, he lets us know that everything we do is virtually in vain. Right. Solomon shared with us that his study, amen, uh, the study that he had done, that he came to the conclusion that after all that he had done and gotten all the accolades and yet had been in the, in the presence, hallelujah, of uh, uh, great people and yet had one, uh, read many, many, many wonderful books and got much revelation from these books. He said he came to the conclusion that it was all vanity. All right. Hallelujah. He came to the conclusion, and, and which lets us know that until we can get to the place that we understand that all of it is vanity. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. That we cannot really do the will of God. Let's us know that that's the posture that a leader must have. And he must understand that God shall bring every work into judgment yeah, with every secret thing. He has to let us know that God, when we work for the Lord, that we're working for the kingdom, Amen. that we have sold our lives out, that we have given our lives over to the kingdom of God. All right. All right. Let's us know that the church, hallelujah, that it takes a hammer and a nail to build a house. Yeah. Uh, you can take a hammer and a nail, you can almost do anything, especially if you add a saw, hallelujah, and a level to it. All right. uh, yes, we have a lot of fancy tools, but if you would take a hammer and a nail and a saw, you could almost do just about anything. All right. I'm sure that Deacon Fisher can share with us, amen, what you can do with a hammer and a nail and a little level. Yes, amen. You can almost, hallelujah, do a whole lot of things. Yes. I know that we have routers and I know we have all these fancy tools, but brothers and sisters, with a hammer and a nail, yes, yes. and yet, hallelujah, a saw, hallelujah, maybe a ruler or a angler, something like that. Right. Amen. You can do a whole lot. And so it lets us know that you don't need a whole lot 
to do what God has called you to do. But brothers and sisters, to build the church, it takes God. All right. Hallelujah. All right. While we can build uh, things uh, that uh, we have, but to build a church, it takes the spirit and the power of God. It takes, amen, the spirit of God, amen, to get into the people and the minds of, hallelujah, his church. You see, brothers and sisters, the church is the mother. It is, it is the mother. It is, it is the thing that God uses to birth into the world. The church, amen, is the mother. And the church must be strong. It must be strong enough to fight off diseases or yet outside influences. It must be fertile enough, hallelujah, to conceive. And it must be healthy enough, hallelujah, and strong enough to bring forth. And so, brothers and sisters, Jeremiah said that the baby is ready to come forth. He said, but the mother is not strong enough. And so it's one thing to become pregnant with something, but it's another thing to become strong enough to push out what God has, hallelujah, inside of you. And brothers and sisters, hallelujah, it is important for us to understand that when we get pregnant, hallelujah, that we cannot, hallelujah, stop taking our spiritual vitamins. Uh -huh. Some people, hallelujah, get pregnant, hallelujah, or receive a word from the Lord and they stop growing. Uh -huh. Hallelujah, never able to push out that which God has, hallelujah, put in us and put and, and destined us to be. You see, brothers and sisters, Matthew 28, 19, I normally use this as the formula of evangelism. So for those of you who are writing down, I would implore you or encourage you to write this down. Go plus teach plus baptize plus teach will equal results. Going go plus teach plus baptize plus teach will equal results. The problem is, brothers and sisters, that many of us are trying to change the formula and getting results from God. What are you saying? The first thing he tells us is to go. He tells us to go. He tells us to go. And yet we try to change the formula to come. Hallelujah. We want to be comfortable and we want people to come to us. But Jesus tells us to go to them. Hallelujah. And they are to come to him. He tells us to go to them. And then as a result of us going to them, they would come to him. The formula, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, has always remained straight. And brothers and sisters, God, in many ways, hallelujah, when the church would not go, he sent tribulation upon the church. He sent fire upon the church to do one thing, and that is to motivate them right. to go, hallelujah, because somebody was waiting on you, hallelujah. I don't care how you feel, hallelujah, I don't care, hallelujah, how you feel, you may feel like nobody wants to hear you, but I want you to know that you have a ministry in you that somebody, hallelujah, is waiting for. You have a ministry, hallelujah, whether you are gifted with song, whether you're gifted with administration, or whatever you're gifted with, there's somebody who's waiting on you to speak to them concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, Brothers and sisters, hallelujah, it is important for us to understand that our mission in the church, Pastor, hallelujah, Travell's mission in the church is to make disciples. It is to make disciples. The problem is that a disciple must be a teachable person. Yeah, yeah. That if you're not teachable, hallelujah, you cannot be a disciple. Uh -huh. A disciple, brothers and sisters, is one who is humble enough, hallelujah, to go through the test, to go through the cycle, yeah. and so therefore you'll be prepared to do the job that God has called you to. Might I, hallelujah, add that brothers and sisters, when you see the greatest anointing on your pastor, when you see the greatest messages that God has given him, that did not come after reading a book, that did not come, hallelujah, after looking at YouTube, that came because God put him in the fire and made him stay there until he got the lesson. Because you can't preach something that you don't understand. And the Bible, or the, the saying that I oftentimes use, that you cannot heal what you cannot feel. And so sometimes what God will allow us to do is go through something. So therefore we'll become sensitive to the people who need the word of God. 
Brothers and sisters, hallelujah, I don't know why people want to get behind this sacred desk. I don't know why, because hallelujah, if the enemy can't get to you, you're trying to get to your companion. If he cannot get to your companion, he'll get to your children. If he cannot get to your children, hallelujah, he'll attack your finances. If he cannot attack your finances, he'll attack, hallelujah, your job. He'll attack your body. And yet, hallelujah, God proves himself to bring you through every storm. And if you would just endure, uh, hallelujah, and stand up and stand behind the sacred desk, somehow we'll get strength. I told my wife the other day, I said, I, I, I'm getting to a place now, hallelujah, the only place I feel comfortable is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yes, I have a wonderful job, and yes, hallelujah, I thank God for it. But the place that I feel comfortable, the place that I know that I'm more effective, the place that you know you've been called yeah, to do yeah, is behind the sacred desk. God. But God has to give you a message before you can speak a message. Right. Ah, there are too many people, hallelujah, trying to speak a message, and God ain't never gave them a message. Hallelujah. Ah, brothers and sisters, in all the words, that you have to go through something in order to become what God wants you to be. And so to be a disciple, one must be apt to learn, hallelujah, to be a follower. The process of how we learn, hallelujah, is the, at the heart of the process. There are several types of disciples that I want to talk about here today. And maybe you will, hallelujah, uh, it's one of them, two of them may, you may be familiar with. Number one is what we call, hallelujah, the superficial disciple. Uh -huh. This is the individual who only follows the Lord for fishes and loaves. That once, hallelujah, the fishes and the loaves are gone. Hallelujah, they will sit at your table, they will put their feet up under the table, they will eat up all the fish and eat up all the loaves of bread. But once, hallelujah, you are called to a specific commitment, hallelujah, they don't want no parts in that. Hallelujah, those people were not fighting when Jesus was feeding them. But yet when he said, except you eat of my blood, hallelujah, drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. Hallelujah, they hallelujah, could not handle the commitment that it caused to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, it takes a commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Not every Sunday are you going to come, hallelujah, and find your word. I don't know where we got that from. That hallelujah, that we have to receive my word. Hallelujah. But brothers and sisters, we receive a word that we can go into the community to share that word with somebody else. And everything that God does for us, he puts a word down in, can I teach you a moment here? He puts a word down into us, not so much for us to rejoice about, it's for us to be, hallelujah, understand and have empowerment that when we get on our job and somebody needs a word from the Lord, that you don't have to say, wait a minute, let me call my pastor. And hallelujah, you can say, wait a minute, pastor preached about this Sunday. Pastor just talked about this Sunday. Hallelujah. And let's break, meet me in the break room and we can talk about the word that was given unto us on Sunday. But there are too many people who have been in church for years and years and years that are still saying, wait a minute, let me call my pastor. What have you been doing all of this time that you were in church that you don't even know how to explain the plan of salvation? Superficial, hallelujah, disciples. And then there is what we have to watch out for in this modern day and time, which we call the deceptive disciple. The deceptive disciple, hallelujah, has venom in their mouth. They get close enough to you to find out what your weaknesses are. And brothers and sisters, hallelujah, I don't care what we are or how anointed we are. We all have a weakness. Hallelujah. I don't care how long you've been saved. Hallelujah. We all have a weakness. I didn't say slip and fall. We all have a button that if you push it, hallelujah, glory be to God, Superman won't come. You'll find out that I really am for our kid. Do I have a weakness here? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that we're human beings. Yes, we are human beings. We all, hallelujah, serve the same God. But hallelujah, I may like chocolate and you may like vanilla. But, but just because I like chocolate and you like vanilla, don't get mad at me because I like chocolate and you like vanilla. Hallelujah. We got to learn how to comprehend together and worship God together. 
so he says, hallelujah, there is a deceptive disciple. They have, have no really good intentions. They just want to get around you. Hallelujah. And they said, they said something. I saw something on social media the other day. said, if you want, hallelujah, glory to God. If you want, hallelujah, anything to get out, just tell your friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody that's close to you. Hallelujah. And to get out. Let me stop meddling. Let me get back into this word. Hallelujah. But the deceptive disciple, hallelujah, they have false agendas. But there is what we call, hallelujah, I like to call them the sincere disciple or the sincere follower. The sincere follower is, hallelujah, sincere about what they're doing. They're not perfect, Brother James, but they're sincere. Hallelujah. Do you know anybody like that, Elder Lewis? Hallelujah. They're not perfect. They don't cross every T. They don't dot every I. I know we act like we cross every T and we dot every I, but the truth of the matter is some of you messed up, hallelujah, since this morning service. Some of you have messed up, hallelujah, since you were just at the altar this morning because, hallelujah, if you were gossiping, you just messed up, hallelujah. And over dinner, hallelujah, glory to God, you just messed up. It's so easy to fall, hallelujah, in the place, but the sincere disciple when God speaks to them and the word of God finds them when God speaks to them they quickly lift their hands and say Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy on me and so how do I get worried when I get in a room for a lot of perfect folks because perfect people don't know that they're imperfect hallelujah, when they sit around and act like hallelujah, they are all perfect, hallelujah, they don't know hallelujah how messed up they are and perfect people buy bother me. But I'd rather be around some folk that said, listen, hallelujah, I'm a work in progress. Lord, I thank you, God. Hallelujah. I want to be whole. I want to be right. I want God to bless me, but he's still working on this area in my life. Is there anybody here that can lift your hands and shout, he's still working on me? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's still working on me. He's still... Now, the problem that you had on last year should not be the problem that you have on this year. Let me, 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 let me tell you because sometimes, hallelujah, he's been working on the same thing for 10 years and hallelujah, and that means because you just don't want to be obedient. You just don't want to submit to the... Can I preach like I feel it? You just don't want to be obedient and don't want... But I want you to know that every round you go, you never stop working. Working. You never stop, hallelujah, or get to the place that you feel like you have arrived because God, when he opens up his word, he will show you how messed up you are and how far you are from the word of God. And so, brothers and sisters, it is these disciples. A disciple, the characteristics of a disciple, the disciple must be willing to give God everything, hallelujah, above relationships, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, you have to be willing willing to submit to God above everything. Hallelujah. You must be willing to suffer for the cause of Christ. You must be willing to deny themselves or yourself and give Christ everything. Hallelujah. So I've got to love God more than I love relationships. I've got to be willing to suffer for the cause of Christ. And then I've got to be willing to deny myself from everything that whatever God says, that I will do. That whatever God says, that's what I will submit to. And Jesus makes it clear, hallelujah, to follow him, hallelujah, requires real sacrifice. It requires real commitment. It requires that you would surrender yourself to the will and the ways of God. He realizes, hallelujah, that hallelujah, one must realize that his spiritual gifts, his talents, his abilities, everything is for the kingdom of God. I never saw such a time when so many people got to be paid to do something for the kingdom of God. Can I preach like I feel it? And you got to be paid to sweep the floor. You got to be paid. Now, I understand, hallelujah, to run certain administrations and to do certain things, but there should be some things that you're just glad to do. Hallelujah, if you have the keys to the church and you are the janitor, Lord, hallelujah, I can come into the church all by myself. Hallelujah, give God glory and just walk through his house that while I'm sweeping the floor and while while I'm vacuuming the floor and while I'm doing the will of God, hallelujah, I can pray, hallelujah, I can anoint the chairs, but hallelujah, but when you're doing it because 
is a side job or a side hustle. You come in with the wrong attitude. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Ah, you come in with the wrong attitude. And then when you release that attitude in the congregation, nobody will do nothing, hallelujah, until they are paid to do it. But brothers and sisters, when God has given you a gift, you are to count it, hallelujah, privilege. God, I thank you that I can sing. I thank you, God, that I can play. I thank you, God, hallelujah, that whatever ability that you've given me, I can do it to the glory of God. Hallelujah, glory be to God. I've never seen it so bad where preachers, hallelujah, are sending out riders, hallelujah, contracts, hallelujah, to preach the gospel. Not their gospel, but God's gospel. How do you charge somebody for something that does not even belong to you? Oh, hallelujah. Matter of fact, if it belongs to you, it can't save nobody. It may be able to make you shout. It may be able to make you jump, but it can't make, it can't save nobody because the Bible says, and Paul says it this way, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And so when we go off preaching anything else other than Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, it may be able to make you feel good, but it cannot save you because the gospel cuts you. It makes you angry. But hallelujah, if the seed ever gets in there, if the seed ever gets to a place, hallelujah, and it gets in your spirit, it will help you to become what God wants you to become. And brothers and sisters, in the fifth chapter of Mark, or in this fifth chapter of Luke, it is the disciples, hallelujah, who Jesus comes to them and says, listen, I want you to throw out or launch out a little deeper. And yet, hallelujah, Peter now begins to come to him because he knows how to fish. How does Jesus, uh, a carpenter, according to the scripture, a, a carpenter, a son of a carpenter, is going to tell me how to fish. Right. How are you going to tell me how to fish, Jesus? Hallelujah, and I got my own business. How are you going to tell me how to fish, Jesus? Hallelujah, glory to God, and I know everything there is. Matter of fact, you see all these people around here, I employ them. You see all these people around here, all these boats, they're mine. They're James, John, and mine. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, James and John would say, hallelujah, my father owned boats. Hallelujah. Not just a boat, but own boats. And Jesus is sitting there saying, listen, when you had enough, when you have got to the place that you had enough, then, hallelujah, I can show you something. And that's what he does with us. He takes us through certain things. He, he's working on us. He's building something in us. Have you gone through something and you feel like you've gone through enough? Hallelujah. To make you lift up your hands and say, Lord, any way you bless me, I will be satisfied. He tells Peter, he said, Peter said, well, Lord, nevertheless, at your word, he said, I will, hallelujah, launch out into the deep. He said, let down your nets for a drought. He does it at his word. And just as as he said it, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, fish jumped in the net. He did not have to work for it. He didn't have to toil for it. All he had to do was listen to what the Spirit says. It is really relatively very easy. He said your success is based on how you hear. It's not based on, hallelujah, what, hallelujah, what book you read. Your success is really, I mean, this ain't in my notes, but I feel the Holy Ghost. He said your success is, and you doing what I tell you to do, even though it may sound crazy, and everybody may not understand what it is is, but when you do what I tell you to do, not just what I tell you to do, when I tell you to do it, because sometimes what we do is we miss the season, because Elder Miller, we would tell you that timing is everything. Good God Almighty, you got to, hallelujah, if he tells you, uh, help me, Holy Ghost, uh, we had a revival down in New Bern, North Carolina, and Elder Carl Miller, hallelujah, uh, we were together, and hallelujah, the Lord told him to go out and raise up his hands. Hallelujah. He ran out to the street right in the middle of the message and raised up his hands and somebody came into the tent. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He can tell you the rest of it a little later on. But he, somebody came in the tent and submitted to, hallelujah, water baptism and got saved that night because he listened to what the Holy Ghost said. Now that sounds crazy. He did not have to, hallelujah, pass them a track. He didn't have to do anything. All he had to do is be where God told him, do what God said, and God would do the drawing. Oh, hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, we will tell you the reason why people don't want to do what God tells them to do is because the enemy will always fight you proceeding the blessing and succeeding the blessing. And sometimes we don't want real warfare because, hallelujah, when we do what God says after the greatest services that we have, then here comes the devil. And we get tired of fighting the devil. But brothers and sisters, you got to fight the devil. If you don't fight the devil, you lose. If you, hallelujah, no man put forth his hand to the plow and look it back because he is not fit for the kingdom. I tell you that Pastor Travell doesn't have any other choice. He does it or he dies. He does it or he misses his crown. And so whether you come and support or whether you do what, hallelujah, God has told you to do, he still has to do what God told him to do. He cannot do it because there's a packed house. He's got to do it even if there's two people in the pews. Even if you don't come to church when God told you to come to church, he still got to show up and do it just like the house is full. Help me, Holy Ghost. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel the Holy Ghost. And so, brothers and sisters, the reason why that many of us cannot get to the place where God has designed us is because we will not submit to his will or to his way. Hallelujah. It is when the fish jumps into the boat that Peter begins to say, my Lord, my master, I realize God had I not, hallelujah, had I just done what you said, you would have opened the door. I love God because, hallelujah, he always allows you turns. Is there anybody here, hallelujah, that even when you make a wrong turn in your GPS, hallelujah, glory to God, the GPS will say, hallelujah, recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. Aren't you glad that God didn't give up on you when you gave up on God? Aren't you glad when you said, I'm through, hallelujah, with it all, God somehow kept on talking to you, kept on speaking in your spirit, kept on encouraging you? Aren't you glad even when you messed up, he still sent somebody your way to send you a word, hallelujah, of deliverance? God, hallelujah. And he tells Peter, he said, listen here, follow me, and I'm going to make you fishes of men. Up until now, Peter, you have been used to hallelujah, taking something from where I placed it and bringing it to the ship and watching it die. He said, but now the power or the word in you is going to be so powerful that hallelujah, you're going to see dead fish come back to life. I speak to you, Pastor Jabel, Hallelujah, glory to God. I believe God has put a word in your mouth for the city of Richmond. Not to see live fish come to your boat, but to see dead fish come back to life. Notice what I said, hallelujah. Not to see live fish, hallelujah, come to death, but to see dead fish come back to life. And so, brothers and sisters, there's somebody who's waiting on the word that God has put in your mouth that will beat you to church, that will beat you and say, Pastor, hallelujah, you ain't got to do that. Let me do that. Hallelujah, Pastor, you ain't got to struggle with that. Let me do that. Pastor, hallelujah, you just focus on preaching because that's what he wanted him to do in the word. That's why he said, pick out among you seven men filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom, hallelujah, that the pastor can put his father time to fasting and prayer. But we want the pastor to fix toilets. We want him to put on lights. We want him to paint the building. And then we want a word from the Lord. The devil is alive. Hallelujah. What did he save you for? Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It takes all night. This 
word don't come. He's got to focus on this word all week long. And so Jesus said, listen here. I've got to get some disciples because I'm about to leave here. I've got to get some disciples. And in the 10th chapter of St. Luke, it is the disciples that Jesus begins to say, give me 70 men. I'm going to send them out. Hallelujah. I'm going to send them out. Hallelujah. Notice, I'm going to send them out. Send somebody to send them out. Not sit around here and just take up space. Not sit up here and just occupy space. Hallelujah. That's why testimony service is so dead sometimes because you ain't got a real testimony. It's all about you. But when God sends you out and you can come back to the house of the Lord and see, I met Joey. Joey was at the supermarket while the Lord just told me to walk through the frozen food section. Joey was crying and Joey was talking about committing suicide. And the Lord gave me a word to give Joey. Hallelujah. I've never seen so many people call to the ministry but never want to do anything. I've never seen so many missionaries call to be missionaries. Call to do what? Sit around here pastor the church. He only called one pastor. Hallelujah. He called you and he called you for a ministry to go into all the world. Hallelujah. And preach what? The gospel. Amen. That's right. Oh, I didn't come to I don't want you to take person. I don't want you to take script. I don't want you to take anything. anything. He said, hallelujah. But I want you to know, uh, because I never send you out and never prepare you. I, I'm going to send you out as lambs among wolves. It doesn't seem fair that God would send us out as lambs among wolves. How does he send us out as lambs now among wolves? I don't have a gun. I don't have a sword. I don't have no money. So if he does, hallelujah, rip me to pieces, hallelujah, I don't even have money to get healed. I don't have money to do anything. Hallelujah. Because, hallelujah, when you put your trust in yourself, then it is not God you look at. Hallelujah, what, look what I did. But God wants you to understand that it was nothing about you that did this. God wants to give you a testimony to know, hallelujah, that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, the enemy would have swallowed me up. But I thank God that God did it. Look at your name and say, God did it. Ah, hallelujah. He said, listen, I send you as lambs among wolves. He said, but hallelujah, you ain't got to worry about it. Because if my word is on you, the flower of Faith, the grass withers, but my word shall abide forever. That was where we, where we, where we were this morning, but I still feel it. When his word is on you and you're operating in the word, I no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, you may have some bruises, but you're still alive. You may have some bad memories, but you're still alive. Look at somebody and tell them I got some scars. But I still got my joy. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here that can shout, I still got my joy. I still got my peace. I still got my determination to glorify God. Hallelujah. So he said, listen here. He said, when you go into the house, don't you go all crazy acting. Don't you go down condemning everybody to hell. You don't know what nobody did. You just go to them and tell them that the kingdom has come. You let them know that the glory of God has just entered into that the thing that you've been praying for has just arrived. Oh, hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them if you've been praying for something. Hallelujah. We ought to see some glory in this house tonight. If you, hallelujah, been praying for God to do something because the kingdom is not out there. The kingdom is inside of you. He said, when you go into that house, I want you to bid them God's speed. I want you to take whatever they give to you. Whatever they feed you, I want you to take it. I don't want you to sit around and make this gospel yours. I don't want you to make this kingdom yours. But I want you to know that God will provide for you. Hallelujah, because he knows your needs. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every need that you have. And sometimes we feel like, God, where are you? Don't you know I got a need? But 
the Lord to listen here. If I can feed the raven, hallelujah, I can feed you. Has there anybody in here that ever lost a meal? Oh, hallelujah. You may have had $5 in your pocket, but you still was able to eat. Hallelujah. How dare you get to the place that you start comparing yourself to other people and not praising God on what God has done. It could be that God has made you his project because he knows that you will depend on him for everything. Is there anybody here that had to depend on him for everything? Just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Thank him for being a God that supplies your every need. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost call creeping up on me. Look at somebody tell them you need to lift up your head. Take that frown off of your face and put a smile on your face because God has made a way out of no way. Look at your check. See what you make and see what God does with what you make. Hallelujah. You gonna sit here and act like God? Hallelujah. Hasn't blessed you? The devil is a lie. We raised a bunch of spiritual hallelujah ah oh, babies we raise people who don't know how to give God glory and to give him praise he said but when you go in that house then everybody's going to receive you he said so if they don't receive you don't you take it personal you shake the dust off your feet and keep right on moving hallelujah because hallelujah what somebody won't take on this side of the road somebody on this side of the road will take it what are you saying do you remember Paul he comes to the apostles and they will not receive him he goes to the Gentiles and when he goes to the Gentiles they gladly receive the word of God and so sometimes doors will be shut in your face for God to move you into the direction of where he wants you. Yes, he didn't want you in the Hampton Inn. No. Hallelujah, your place on Midlothian. The time was up. But could it be that God brought you here because for such a time as this? Could it be that you were not ready when you were in the Hampton Inn? But God had to work some stuff out of you. He had to make something out of you. He had to make you into a disciple. Hallelujah. But don't you ever get to the place that you look back in regret of the doors that God shut for you. Because you still could be there and not have a church full tonight. So you got to learn that even when he shuts doors, he's working things out in your favor. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, God will do it every time. Hallelujah. And so the disciples, they do what he said. Minister Robinson, they lay hands and people are delivered. They speak the word and demons are challenged. They do what Jesus said and then all of a sudden they come back. Hallelujah. And they're doing tally. They go to convention. They go to convocation. Doc, how many you riding with? Hey, Doc, hallelujah. How many seating in your church? Hey, Doc, what did they do for you for anniversary time? Hey, Doc, hallelujah. How many you done baptized? Hey, Doc, hallelujah. Don't doc me. Hallelujah. I'm not here to hallelujah compete with how many people got saved under my ministry or how many times I preached a year. I'm here because my name is written. Hallelujah. And when I lose perspective of my name being written, I can get puffed up in pride and don't even know that I've been fired all along. 
be riding in your Mercedes and be fired all along. I went to one church, Pastor Javel. I'm driving in my old Hyundai, my 2011 Hyundai, and the greeting party, a rather large church in one of the cities, the greeting party. The deacon said, man, I thought I was looking for a Mercedes. I thought I was looking for a BMW. And you come riding up here in a Hyundai. And the Lord got in my mouth, Joy. I said, well, Jesus came riding in on a donkey. Hallelujah. Your problem is you're looking for too many people who coming in on a stallion. And God wants to bring you in on a donkey. Don't be ashamed that you're riding on a donkey. Hey, ride the donkey. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pull up to the convocation in my 2011 Hyundai. Hallelujah. That I'm still making payments on. Gladder than ever. And I already had the Lincolns. I already had the Cadillacs. I already been there. Done that. But it didn't give me no power. Hallelujah. It gave me prestige. But it didn't give me no power. So I ride in my Hyundai. Then I can come all the way to on a tank of gas. My God, hallelujah. You got to learn how to not let people play you and not let people play you down on who you are and what you got to know who you are. You got to know your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, in my text, here it is a man who comes to the place that he said, well, Lord, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? I declare to you, Pastor Chevelle, I know you're a lawyer, and I didn't pull this text because you are a lawyer. Matter of fact, the Lord just brought it back to my mind that you are a lawyer. But lawyers sometimes are hard to deal with because they are scientific in their methods. They have to know line by line, precept by precept. They got to know where the period is going to be. Oh, you can't put a semicolon where there needs to be a comma. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, you're ignorant. Oh, but the Bible tells me that there was some men who was called ignorant, but they had power with God. You got to be willing to be called ignorant in order for God to give you the power. Oh, preacher, where is that? Paul had credentials that runs all the way up my arm. But Paul said, hallelujah. He said, I counted it all as dumb that I may win Christ. In other words, to get elevated, you got to lose. You don't have to gain. You got to lose. If you're going to gain Christ, you got to be not willing and afraid to lose. Is there anybody here that can lift your hand? and shout hallelujah. He said, look there. Jesus said, hallelujah, thou shalt love thy Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, thou know it. He said, hallelujah, what do you know? You're educated. And the man said, well, thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus said unto him, thou hast rightly said that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But the lawyer then turned around because now we know that Jesus has said something that hits a button, Brother James, because Jesus knows, hallelujah, when we come to church, that we shout over stuff that we should be on the altar for. And Jesus is not going to allow us to leave church and just shout our way in. That's why it worries me that these preachers come in and just shout you and don't give you no word. And you sitting there saying, oh, we had a great time. All you did was some exercise. But if you don't have a word that you can take home and apply it on Monday through Saturday or through Sunday, honey, hallelujah, you are going to mess up 
And so he said, hallelujah. The man said, well, who is my neighbor, Jesus? Ah, there's the problem. Bishop Miller, he has a problem with somebody. He loves God. He loves, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. He worships God, but he has a problem with somebody. And Jesus said here, he said, listen here. The kingdom is likened unto this. That a man went up, hallelujah, left Jerusalem, came down to Jericho. He leaves Jerusalem. He leaves the city of Zion. He leaves the worship place. And he goes down to Jericho. Now the Bible doesn't tell me that he sinned. He could have lived in Jericho for all I know. The Bible doesn't say that he sinned. But the Bible does say that he leaves from one place unto another. And while he goes to this particular place, the Bible says that the enemy sees him. He sees him from afar. He does not gain up on him when he's in Jerusalem. He does not come to Jerusalem, but he sees him. Hallelujah, while he's by himself. He sees him. Hallelujah, I don't know if he was singing the songs of Lion, but he was all by himself. There was no Hammond organ. There was no drums. There was no motif. There was no, hallelujah, preacher gyrating. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, these thieves stripped him, stripped him of his arraignment, and beat him, and left him half dead, stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and left him half dead, just like some of you, that things happen just when you thought that things were getting to the place, that God, hallelujah, was working things out in your faith, and yet God, hallelujah, on your journey, you were left there for dead. You were left there, hallelujah, bleeding out and left half dead. But the word is that the enemy could have killed you and God did not allow the devil to kill you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, let's get it together. Come on, say neighbor, you could have been dead. That thing could have killed you. You could not be here. But God, hallelujah, in his wise providence came by and picked you up out of the gutter. It wasn't the priest that came. The priest came by, looked on him, and went right by him. The praise and worship team looked at him, crossed the street, looked down on them. I get worried about people who are only anointed inside of the church. Let me preach here. Ah, hallelujah. If your anointing is not any good enough to help somebody out on the street, please shut up and sit down and let God get in your heart. Hallelujah. How can you walk by somebody who needs to be delivered and walk by hallelujah and look at them as though you got I got mine and you got yours to get the devil is alive but he's calling us to help somebody else out who cannot help themselves oh, do you have a family member who needs some help do you have a co-worker that needs some help do you have a friend that needs some help don't you sit in here and talk about how good God is and you ain't called them to tell them I'm praying for you don't you sit in here and see somebody missing from church and you don't go after them to see suppose they're going through a terrible divorce and they don't have the power to make it to church suppose hallelujah they're 
finances have been attacked. And hallelujah, that car has been repossessed. And they don't have a ride to get to church. My God, hallelujah. But we got to walk in the spirit to the point that we can hear God. Do you remember when we would hear God? God would say, take this bag of groceries over to this house and drop these groceries off. Hallelujah. Do you remember when God would tell you to call this person right now that they need prayer? Do you remember when God would speak a word in your spirit and tell you to write a check and put it on them? wait around for them to open it just do what God said do but we've gotten to a place that hallelujah we don't do what God say do but I believe city of refuge that God is raising up a people that he's opening up your ears he's opening up your eyes that when you get into the Walmart you can see this single mother trying to pay for her food instead of giving her a track and trying to get her to come to church so and pay a bill and walk away hallelujah hallelujah glory be to God because I want you to know that his ways are not our ways neither are his thoughts our thoughts I got to go y'all but I feel the Holy Ghost he said look at here a Samaritan says the Sharon a Samaritan comes by the priests don't help him the Levites don't help him but a Samaritan one who is an outcast one who can't even worship in Jerusalem but hallelujah I don't know Carl if he was the leper who could not go with the other nine. I don't know who he was, but I do know that he must have been a recipient of the grace of God. I do know for him to have compassion on a Jew, he had to put his differences beside and realize it's not what you do to me, but it's how I respond to you. I can't just go beyond and not give you what you need. I can't just go beyond and not, hallelujah, see that, hallelujah, there's still some life left in you. So he picks him up. He puts him on his beast. He said, I'll walk and I'll let you ride. He pours oil in him. He takes him and bounds him up. Hallelujah. He gives him. Hallelujah. Mercy. He gives him love. Then he takes him to the safe place. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're in the safe place tonight. Come on here and shout hallelujah. We're in the safe place tonight. Is there anybody here that can thank God that you're in the safe place? Have you got to the place that you forgot that God found you? Naked, wounded, and beat. But he picked you up. He picked you up. He placed you on solid ground. The church is a type of the Samaritan. There's neither Jew nor Gentile in the household of faith. In other words, I don't care where you come from. I just want you to know that Jesus died for you. He died that you may have a right to the tree of life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Ah, did you hear what I said? I don't care what your income status is. I don't care where you live. I don't care what kind of job you got. I just want to know, do you know Jesus? Do you know the man from Galilee? Do you know the man who can turn things around for you? Do you know the Savior? Of 
about the whole wide world. Is there anybody here? I'm looking for somebody that was left out in the cold. I'm looking for somebody who didn't think that you would make it back. And hallelujah thought that you were left out cold and dead. Your heart was so broken. You never thought you would be able to praise him again. Your heart was so broken that you never thought you could give him glory again. But God reached way down and picked you up. And you say, God, why did this have to happen? Because now you will not walk by nobody else. Now you're willing and able to help somebody else. Do I have a witness here? Then hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to pay it for it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we got work to do. Come on here and tell them we got work to do. What are you saying, Elder Easley? Hallelujah. Is there somebody that needs an extended hand? Is there somebody that you need to forgive? Is there somebody that you need to extend the mercies of God? And I hear God say, if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. The priest didn't want to forgive. The Levite didn't want to forgive. But there was a Samaritan who knew what it felt like to be out in the cold. So I ain't looking for nobody who dotted every I and crossed every T. But I'm looking for somebody who been left out in the cold before. Who can stand to your feet and say, I know what it feels like to be left half dead. I know what it feels like to feel uncovered. I know what it feels like to be beat till I'm black and blue. And so now I can't walk by. I can walk by people and know and sense that even though they're smiling, I can walk by them and feel their hurt. I can walk by them and feel they don't have to ask me anything. I can walk by just like Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? Is there anybody here? I want you to know if you have not gotten to that level, God will use a fire to stir you up. God will use a storm to stir you up, to get you out of the pews and get you into the highways and the hedges. Hallelujah. You got to get off your comfortable clothes. You got to get down in the mock and the moderate clay. You got to spend some of your money. Hallelujah. Until they can get to the place that they can fend for themselves. But I feel there's a healing coming to the city of Richmond. I feel there's a healing. But you can't fish like you normally fish. You can't fish. You gotta look for dead fish and speak life. You gotta look for dead fish. You gotta look for half dead men. Because Pastor Javel, I know, hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. I thank you for those of you that came here from other churches to help him. I thank you. But I want you to know they are helps. But the ministry is to go into the highways and the hedges. Go to the crack house. Go to the dope house. Go to the prostitute. Hallelujah. See them in a place where they don't know how to make it. But preach the gospel. Sometimes you got to take your hallelujah text on the steps of the whorehouse. You got to take your Sometimes you gotta take your text on a street corner. But I hear God say that if you would go, I'll do the work. The results is coming. Look at 
at your name and say, Kate, we got work to do. Don't you go judging folk. Don't you go putting your mouth on folk. Don't you go talking about what they got on and how long they had it on. But just go with the love of God. And the love of God will draw sinners unto repentance. Hallelujah. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, could it be that we've been our own worst enemy? We tried to undress them before they ever knew about the name of Jesus. We tried to ship him before they ever knew Genesis. We tried to take him out. We don't know if that's all they had. But I hear God say, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Look at your neighbor. I say, neighbor, you wouldn't look at first got saved. Some of you were shacking, but the word worked on you. Some of you were messed up, but the word worked on you. Some of you didn't know how to act, but the word worked on you. Look at somebody say, we gotta let the word do the work. Leave them alone. Let the word do the work. Leave them alone. City of refuge. Leave them alone. There's safety in the house. There's deliverance in the house. So what? They don't have the head covered. So what? They got on dungarees. So what? Hallelujah. So what? They shacking. But if they sit under the gospel, if they keep coming, if they sit under the gospel, all of a sudden you're gonna see change. say as to who God was going to use and to who he wasn't going to use. I want you to know that the power of God is able to deliver from him. The power of God is able to deliver from him. Let me say it again. The power of God, My God. is able to deliver from anything. Do you have a loved one? This is harvest time. Oh yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you Thank believe you, that we can pray in this house? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And God can prepare the ground. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And make the person available for you to share the love of God. I'm looking today for some people that you know that God has called you to help hurting people. I want you to come on up and you, this call to Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nobody. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God is called to help. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus
If you don't cry out, he'll raise the box. God will have a witness in the earth. One thing I learned about Christmas, I got 25 years working in prison. But one thing I learned about Christmas is that if you can ever get them to receive the gospel, if you can ever get them to submit to the gospel of God, they will go and they will witness at all kinds of levels. Friday, I couldn't make it, but I was invited to an all-night prayer service in the prison. An all-night prayer service at a maximum facility in a prison. And I promise that the very next one you have, I'll be there. Because I want to witness what God has I'm praying for the burden. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because you can't do it if the burden is not there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can have church. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But God ain't calling you to have church. He's calling you to be church. He's calling you to rise and let the glory of God be manifested. First thing you can start is with your family. Do you have a hurting person in your family? Do you have a hurting member in your family that needs you? Need a word of encouragement from you. Maybe they've been in church, but they still need help. Do you have a coworker that's a good person? You have struggles that they need help. I'm challenging you today to pick up the burden. Father, in the name of Jesus. As we pray, I pray, God, that I have not said my word, but I've given unto this church, which you've given me to share with them. I pray, God, hallelujah, that you will raise up spiritual evangelists that would go, hallelujah, and share the word of God with everyone that they come and come in. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, she will raise them up, stir them up, stir them up, stir them up, God. Put the burden on them, God. Stir them up, God. They're broken people, God. <laughs> They're broken people been hurt in church and they don't want nothing to do with church but God I pray God that you're raising up city refuge Ooh, hallelujah to go to the highways and the heavens hallelujah with a word hallelujah that would heal a word that would deliver a word hallelujah that would save and set free not to judge them because they're already judged to be in the world. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you will raise them up and let them know, hallelujah, that there's a God who loves, who heals, that will deliver. Woo, hallelujah. You want to know how I know? Because he delivered me. He saved me. He turned me around. That's what you got to do. You got to show them who God has turned around. You got to show them what God did. That if he can do it for me, he'll do it for you. If he can turn me around, you got to be excited about what God did in you. You got to be happy about what God did in you. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Thank God for what he did in you. Praise him for what he did in you. I charge you. 
charge you. Charge you. Leaving this place will not be business as you. That you will move in the power of the Holy Ghost. That God will put healing in your mouth. That he will put deliverance in your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. That he will put, hallelujah, the power of God down in your spirit. The burden down in your spirit. Hallelujah. That men and brother will be saved by coming in contact with you. That they will be healed by coming in contact with you. That they will be delivered by coming in contact with you. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I give you glory for the great things that you're doing. Somebody shout, we got work to do. Come on, somebody shout, we got work to do. Come on, put your arms around somebody and tell them we got work to do. Come on, you gotta feel it. 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 You gotta feel that cry. They're not strong enough to make it to the house of the Lord. They need some help. You gotta feel what they feel. You gotta know what they're going through. Hallelujah! Who is my neighbor? The one that you don't want to go to. The one that you'd rather not deal with. That is your neighbor. Tell somebody, hallelujah, it's got to be done God's way. Tell somebody, it's got to be done. God's way. Come on, give God a praise. Of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 I want God to use me, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to live so God can use me anywhere, anytime. I want to live so God can use me. Thank you. 
put your hands together and give God some worship. Give us some glory. Give us some honor. Give us some praise. I'm glad I know Jesus. But more important than that, He knows me. I thank Him for His grace. I thank Him for His mercy. Thank Him for His protection. Thank Him for His provision. Thank Him for His word. Thank Him for His church. Thank Him for the saints. Come on, somebody. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for grace and mercy. Thank God for another day's journey.
can't shoot. But God says you will, you can, you shall.
church. No, I'm not a perfect pastor. But I love God and I love God's people. Thank you, Jesus. And we're here to do the will of the Lord. Until either he comes home, comes back, or he calls us home. We're going to do the will of God. Amen. Once again, we thank you for coming. May God bless you this time.